How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? Welcome to a bad hair day. Relax, let's not make a big deal out of this. We all have them. You think I like looking like this? You think I want to look like I'm about to shotgun a Budweiser at my father-in-law's barbecue? It's not easy looking at yourself every day on camera, watching yourself age before your eyes. <sighs> anyway, who's, who's excited for Full Metal Alchemist? Gluttony. I smell him. I can smell him. The Scarface just fallen. He's close. I can taste his stink. How is Gluttony both the scariest and doofiest character in the entire show? I can't tell if there's an equal ratio of scary to doofy, or if the attributes correlate to one another, but I've got some people running the numbers. I'll get back to you when I have them crunched. Yup, the numbers are in. The doofiness definitely adds to the scary factor. God, I did not expect for the payoff of that joke to come so quickly. You know, sometimes, sometimes me and the show are just completely in sync. Oh my god, him screaming about losing an arm definitely didn't help things either. I want his body found. Don't take so much as a coffee break until that's done, do you understand? Come on, Colonel, can't you cut us some slack? At this rate, you're gonna work us all to death. Definitely investigate the guy trying to get you to ease up on the investigation. Come on, Colonel, it's a serial killer. We'll catch him eventually, ease up. Give us a week off, come on, we've earned it. Oh, relax, I'm joking. Jesus, who died? Major Armstrong. Oh, Second Lieutenant Ross and Sergeant Brosh. To what do we owe this pleasure? Ah, Ross and Brosh. I see you're filling in for officers Kosh and Slosh. Sounds like Armstrong made those names up on the spot. Or the mangaka did. Yeah, I'll be there in a sec. I just gotta finish up this chapter. All right, and then Armstrong says, Oh, Edward, allow me to introduce you to officers uh, Schmoop and Droop. All right, cool, done, coming. Although, if you don't mind me asking, why are you wearing a suit of armor? <laughs> It's a hobby. A hobby? What kind of freaky hobby is that, Lieutenant? Just say it's because you fight superhuman freaks who are constantly trying to kill you. Well, would you rather he wear a leather crop top like you? You guys are the freaks. The word itself is so beautiful. I've loved books my whole entire life, ever since I first learned to read as a girl. A job was heaven. Mm. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can't make Al take up half of the screen if you aren't going to draw him with any detail. Half of that entire frame was just a gray blob. So they fired me! If I don't find another job, I'll never be able to move my poor elderly mother into a better hospital! Oh god, is there going to be a twist where it turns out she fused her sick mother with a book or something? People do crazy things when they get kicked out of their professions in this world. I'm keeping my eye on this chick. <laughs> Excuse me, there was one thing we wanted to ask you. Yes? Do you remember seeing any research belonging to someone named Tim Marco? Yo, she's kind of bad though, isn't she? Little bookworm cutie all turtlenecked up? Man, forget about it. I'd like to worm my way between her pages. I said I'd like to worm my way- It'll take a while, but I could write them out for you. Thank you, bookworm! <laughs> You're my hero! You're welcome. God, they fucking stripped Al's animation budget. He's looked like a sheet ghost this entire episode. Before anyone gets in a tizzy, I'm not criticizing it. I know they do this in the manga too. I'm just saying, Al has looked like a piece of abstract art this whole episode. More so than any other. Here you are, complete copies of all Tim Marco's notes. <gasps> Dude, I'm gonna go to my local library and start acting up if she doesn't stop being such a cutie. I'm gonna cause some fucking trouble at the information desk if these animators don't start behaving themselves. Oh great, does this mean we came all this way for a cookbook? Miss, which part of this made you think it was an important document? Is it not what you're looking for? Miss, what made you think we'd want to read any of these dumbass notes? Oh, I almost forgot Jessica's fee. Lieutenant? Here. This is my registration number and the pocket watch for ID. Yo, Cheska, more like Fresca, dude. This bitch is cold. I would do literally anything for a kiss on the cheek from Cheska. Also, I'm sure this is illegal, but what's stopping an alchemist from just slapping his hands together and, like, creating money? Like, how do you even regulate that? These are designed to look like recipes to the average person, but they're actually advanced alchemical notes. Only the alchemist who originally wrote them can understand. I want to see Ed make, like, 70 accidental practice cakes while he tries to decipher what this cookbook is actually trying to teach him. I don't understand. Why does this one make a bomb, but this one makes a strawberry shortcake? Al, 
There's a section in here on green tea. Green tea? Are you thinking what I am? Uh-huh. It might be a reference to the green lion of metallurgic alchemy. Yeah, no, lion. Good. No, that, that was totally what I was thinking. Um... So this is, uh, completely unrelated, but, uh, can we stop for Boba after this? Great! We've got a place to start. Let's do this! Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. Am I the only one whose heart clenches waiting to hear what tone the announcer is gonna say the title in each episode? I was waiting for him to be like, Full Metal Alchemist! And then they cut back and everyone in the library's been killed. I think I've got exactly the person you guys are looking for. Well, I have read the military's criminal case records and I do remember them all. That's all I needed to hear, lady. You're hired. Yo, let's go employ her ass! Please make this girl a reoccurring character. If not in the show, at least in my dreams. <laughs> In that case, a certain someone should hurry and get back to work, or you're gonna have to come up with a new motivational phrase. Oh, let's give it up for some left-handed representation. As a fellow leftist, I finally feel seen. That's what leftist means, right? In order to manufacture even a single stone, you have to make multiple human sacrifices. How could the military authorize research into something so horrible? Nice, buddy. Really earning that government paycheck. Brother, you should really get something to eat. No thanks. Pretty awful, huh? Hmm. So good. So well done. Such natural acting and pacing. Such great brother writing. I love, I just loved that, like, I don't know. I like the beat in between him being like, you should get some sleep. And then Ed, like, finally saying, like, what's on their mind. But saying it in a way that's like... I don't know, it's like a nice ease into the discussion. Like, instead of being like, so what are we gonna do now? He's just like, that's, uh, it's pretty rough what we learned today, huh? You know? That's great. That's really good. I'd love to see a scene where they have to debate whether or not it'd be okay to use a Philosopher's Stone that's already made. Like, a Philosopher's Stone requires human sacrifices to make. But if one's already made and they use it for good, would that technically make its use ethical? Like, it's already made, so not using it would be wasting those human lives, right? But then would using it be condoning its creation and then encouraging more sacrifices? I'm not necessarily taking a stance one way or another, but that's the kind of discussion that I would be excited to see, especially considering that it's coming from two, like, desperate teenagers. So it's a good opportunity to, like, make them a little more flawed, because you couldn't entirely, like, blame them for siding one way or the either. Turns out the truth is too dangerous to hold. <laughs> I'm starting to think this is God's special way of torturing people who've committed taboos. I'm gonna torture you if you don't stop calling them taboos. But I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What? I... I'm furious. I wanted to hear what he had to say so badly. You said it needed live humans. Ugh. There'd be plenty of condemned criminals in the prison. Officially, they'd be recorded as executed. Honestly, if you're gonna execute someone, all I'm saying is if you're gonna execute someone anyway, why waste the soul? Why waste the soul? That's all I'm saying. I wonder if the government is involved. Why do I have the feeling that we're getting involved in something really dangerous here? That's why we told you to pretend like you'd never heard anything! I like seeing these extras become self-aware of their expendability. We weren't! We, we weren't! weren't we, we promise! promise. Yeah, sure we weren't. I could watch Al do his sneaky little run for hours. I feel like it's missing a few sound effects, though. I don't care how quiet he's trying to be. I bet Al running sounds like a freight train caught in a tornado. Whether I'm fine on my own or not isn't the issue. You're too big to get through here. <laughs> it's not like I asked to get this big. You crawl back right now, and you fucking apologize. Lucky I've got a small body. Oh, and here I thought he was learning to accept his shortcomings. Pun obviously intended. <gasps> Whoa, that was a sick design. That is a classic Adult Swim anime design if I've ever seen one. I'm sure that's not, like, relatable to anybody, but for some reason, 
that design of that dude that just jumped down on Al is like the epitome of what Adult Swim anime used to look like when I was growing up. Like, Bleach, Naruto, Inuyasha, like, that guy's design looked like it would fit in any of those anime. But not necessarily, like, Demon Slayer or My Hero or anything, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like you could put this guy in, like, a Naruto movie, no one would bat an eye. Brief episode transition, if you like what you're seeing here and you want to get more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you get access to exclusive reaction videos that will never be up on YouTube. Uh, right now I'm reacting to Blue Lock, and you also have access to my whole Season 1 Food Wars reaction. Top of that, you get access to my exclusive Discord server, and access to all the live streams I've done in the past and will do in the future. You're also just helping out the page a ton, and ensuring that I'm able to keep putting out content as frequently as I do, both on this channel and on my other channels. I have a second channel called Honestly Brutal, where I talk about video games, movies, TV shows, etc. And I also have a podcast with NC Hammer 23 where it's mostly anime, but sometimes video games, because I love video games and I just can't help myself. The links to all those things will be in the description below. If you like my content, you want to help support me, or just check out some of my other pages, make sure you check those out as well. And now, on to the next one. I'm number 66. Well, that's the name they gave me when I came to work here anyway. I'm going to cut you up nice and neat. God, this guy looks so fucking sick. Imagine hiring a guy that looks like this. For any job. I don't even care if you're hiring him for an assassin position. I'd be so afraid of this guy. I just spend every night being like... I should give him a raise. What is all this? I bet this is what they use to transmute a philosopher's stone. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Great stealth, Ed. Really bang up job there. Nobody ever teach you to talk inside of your fucking head? Is this what failing a stealth check in D&D looks like? All right, I'm gonna sneak in and try and find the loot, okay. I rolled a three. All right, your character sneaks in through the castle window and says out loud, I'm going to sneak in and find the loot. You are immediately assailed by guards. Yeah, that checks out. I'm just good like that. Who are you, pal? The one in charge of guarding this place from curious brats. For the moment, let's just say my name is number 48. Are these guys also possessing armor? Is that what the red eyes signify? Also, the fucking armor design going on in 1912 Germany was fucking banging. If the Germans were rolling up to World War I wearing this armor, done. Finished war. No cliffhanger, no sequel. It would have been a Netflix limited series kind of war. A prosthetic arm, huh? No matter. My sword can pierce steel as well as flesh. Gonna go ahead and call bullshit on that, considering his steel hand just deflected your sword. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you're hollow inside. You're a perceptive one. I could tell from the sound. I spar against someone like you all the time. Oh, called it. Where's everyone getting this sweet-ass armor from? Also, <laughs> where'd this dude get a katana? At least give him a Zweehinder or something if we're gonna pretend this takes place in Germany. Back when I still had a living body, I was better known as Slicer. I was a mass murderer, you see. I love how this guy introduces himself as a mass murderer. Not a mercenary or an assassin or anything, just a... Just a guy who did what he loved and loved what he did. So, you're the gentleman who's gonna be taking my daughter out this evening. Yes, that's right. My name is Slicer, and I'm a mass murderer. Oh, how interesting. I, re I respect your, uh, I respect your forwardness. Did you hear what I said? My dear little Alicia is about to turn three! Cool them cheeks, you're in the office. Do you think this could wait? I'm at work. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm at work, too. She's the cutest little thing. I said cool them! I'm sure she's adorable, but stop calling me to gush over your daughter. And on a military line, too. I like how Maze just calls his boss to gush about his daughter. What a goober. What a textbook definition of a goober. Like, I feel like if I just called my friends to tell them about how cute my girlfriend is, I would cease having friends. Hey, it's Danny, uh, just calling to remind you that my girlfriend is an absolute cutie patootie with a rump that don't quit. Um, it's been... Six weeks since you stopped returning my calls, so, uh, so, you know, hit, hit me back. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. I thought it was suspiciously quiet in here. 
<laughs> Major Armstrong's gonna take his shirt off again and yell at us some more, isn't he? There should not be this many people afraid of Armstrong's nudity. Especially this many co-workers. <laughs> the percentage of chrome so it's less prone to rusting but it's not as strong so don't try anything crazy what did she think he used this arm for tame activities the regular arms for grabbing things the robot arms for doing things crazy in that case i don't need to worry you see we've been sparring partners a long time and i've still never beaten him <laughs> Oh, that's hype! What a sick reveal that Al is stronger than Ed. Obviously, he's physically stronger, but this is the first time that they've established that Al is, like, the better fighter of the two. Would you like to hear? It's a pretty good yarn. You probably already know it, though. It all starts with a man by the name of Barry. Oh, okay, here comes this guy's whole life story. Can't wait to learn the entire lore of this character who definitely won't show up again after this episode. Yes, that's right! He's standing in front of your very eyes! I am the infamous serial killer, Barry the Chopper! Oh, what the fuck? Come on! That's so on purpose, right? Barry the Chopper? What, are they fucking with me? Shouldn't you be going, ah, or what happened to your body, or something? Ah, what happened to your body, freak? Hey, now that's impolite. Great bit. Phenomenal bit. Why is Al the comedic backbone of the entire series? Are you sure that you're not a puppet created and controlled by your so-called brother? <gasps> Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask something like that? Oh my god, what? What the fuck? Why would they do this? What a crazy strategy. This guy was losing the fight, so he decided to give Al an existential crisis instead. Silly boy. You were never alive to begin with. It's as simple as that. Then how do you know that you were really alive? I was, trust me. I like how this guy doesn't even have to explain himself to freak Al out. Because Al is just like a 12-year-old boy. Like, he gave no evidence of this crazy theory, but it doesn't matter because Al's already rattled. Like, the fact that Al is just a kid makes him so much more susceptible to just buying this shit without any proper evidence. I also like that they establish that this guy couldn't beat Al in a fight, so instead he has to, like, get in his head. This area's off limits! Don't move! <laughs> hey, buddy. Next time you see two robot monsters duking it out in a restricted area, d just go ahead and open fire. Go out! Do it now! What? God, I love that strategy. They did this exact same thing in Buddy Daddies, and it's always hype. I forgot to mention something about this mass murderer, Slicer. His crimes were really done by a pair of brothers. An independent head and body. Yo! Oh, that's so sick. Die! Oh. It's crazy that it took fighting Scar to teach Ed that you can destroy things by just stopping alchemy halfway through the process. That just seems so immediately obvious. Like, it's weird that it's Scar's whole gimmick. Quit, you pathetic blubbering, you idiot! You are trying to kill one of our most important sacrifices. Do you understand me? Oh, that's so sick. I like that damaging the seal hurts them, but only breaking it kills them. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Ah! Lucky me! <laughs> Yo, this show's actually pretty funny. The comedy's pretty good. I did not expect this show to be as funny as it is. You know, Al? Well something I've been wanting to tell you for a while, but I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What was Ed about to tell me? God damn it. Oh no, he's in Al's head so deep. What? Stay right there, or the next one puts a hole in your head. This isn't going quite as I planned. This is just... Man, this is just not my day. Brother! His life's not in danger, but he has lost a lot of blood, so you might want to get him to a hospital as soon as you can. Well, that's... <laughs> weirdly considerate. If they need him alive, why wouldn't they just capture him? Like, they keep saying that they need Ed as the sacrifice. Seems strange to let him scamper about <laughs> without their supervision. But anyway, that is episodes 7 and 8 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Still good? 
you know, obviously still good. It's interesting that more armor people have gotten introduced. I'm interested, I'm very interested in, like, the lore of this armor. It's like I said, like, wh like, what is this for? People find it weird that Al wears it, and it hasn't shown up in, like, any of the flashbacks of the Ishvalan War. Like, is it, like, truly medieval armor? Because it seems like... I mean, it seems heavy as hell, so maybe that's why nobody uses it. But it's pretty rad armor. Um, hopefully they explore a little more about that, and it's not just, like some cool shit for the sake of whatever. But anyway, as always, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of these episodes as well, and let me know what your favorite jokes from the video were in the comments down below. It helps me make TikTok, shorts, all that. And I will see you all next time.